yeah welcome to the session 2 of the course wireless communication and mobile technology so the objective of this session is to introduce the various frequencies for radio transmission so after going through this session the students will be able to understand the various frequency bands which is available for radio transmission or wireless transmission they will be able to know the facts about signals antennas and signal propagation and also they will be understanding the role of multiplexing in wireless communication because in a wireless communication the media is a shared media the media is here in the open space so here we need some multiplexing techniques for for transmitting the signals without any interference and then the students will be knowing the need of modulation to transmit digital data whenever you want to transmit a digital data it should be modulated with the analog carrier and then only it, it can be transmitted so what is the need of modulation that you will be able to uh, understand and also you will be getting the knowledge of spread spectrum and a brief introduction to cellular cellular systems so this is this is the objective of this particular session so let us start with the frequency the band for radio communication so these are the various uh, frequencies available for radio communication starting from very low frequency to infrared frequency and visible light and ultraviolet frequency so these are the different frequencies available and different frequencies were used for different types of communication so let us understand which frequencies were used for which communication here you can see many terms like uh, uh, vlf uh, so vlf represents very low frequency lf represents low frequency mf means medium frequency hf is high frequency vhf is very high frequency uhf is ultra high frequency shf is super high frequency and E E H F is extremely high frequency. So these are the different types of frequencies, which were used for different types of communication. So that uh, we'll be understanding like which band of frequency is used for uh, which type of communication. Okay. So the spectrum of data transmission it uh, it it varies from three hundred hertz to Three hundred terahertz. So you can here see here the starting is three hundred hertz, and here the visible light spectrum or UV spectrum it is in the range of three hundred terahertz. So so basically the relationship between frequency and wavelength is given by this equation, lambda is equal to c by f, where lambda represents the the wavelength, and c c represents the speed of light. And F is the frequency. So, yeah. So here C is a constant, which is three into ten to the power eight uh, meters per second. So these are the different frequencies uh, which we have already discussed in the diagram. Uh, so there are around nine types of frequencies, and different devices or different communication means were possible. Through various frequencies. So, if you so, let us first uh, start with the traditional wired networks. In a traditional wired networks, for communication up to several kilometers, uh, around hundred uh, kilohertz of a frequency, the signals with 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 several hundred kilohertz uh, signals were used, and typically these signals. they use coaxial cable 
they use coaxial cable so coaxial cable can support the maximum uh, signal with a frequency of several hundred kilohertz and then comes the twisted pair cable which support signal uh, with uh, with frequencies of several hundred megahertz and then we have optical cable fiber optics cable which supports signal with frequencies of several hundred terahertz so this is about wired networks so our concentration is on wireless communication radio transmission so vlf represents very low frequency these are long waves if the frequency is low then the wave will be long if the frequency is less then the wave will be shorter so the application of vlf is a, is not much so let us start with low frequencies so low frequencies were basically used by submarines low frequencies were basically used by uh, submarines because it can uh, and penetrate through water and also it can penetrate through the earth surface and then medium frequencies and high frequencies medium frequencies and high frequencies were basically used by radio stations for using am and fm transmission that is amplitude using amplitude modulation and frequency modulation for amplitude modulation it's, it it works in the frequency between 520 and 1605.5 kilohertz and for frequency modulation it's it, it works in the in the bandwidth of in the band of 87.5 and 108 megahertz and there is also another type of radio communications which is called as short wave radio communication uh, which operates at a frequency of 5.9 to 26.1 megahertz okay. so this also comes under uh, the comes in the range of uh, medium frequency or uh, high frequency okay so basically it it comes under uh, uh, high frequency because because uh, medium frequency is less than 3 megahertz so it is more than 3 megahertz so it it, it comes under high frequency signals so this short wave radio is this short wave radio is used worldwide and how it works in the sense it works by reflecting through the ionosphere that is these waves cannot uh, pass over ionosphere so it it reflect back and forth between the ionosphere and the earth surface and by that it it uh, it it transmits over the world so so you so it can so so it means it can transmit uh, throughout the and then we have vhf very high frequency uh, so there is analog tv operating on very high frequency in the frequency band of 174 to 230 megahertz and followed by that we have uhf ultra high frequency here also we have analog tv operating in the band of 470 to 790 megahertz so there are several devices which is working in the ultra high frequency band and there is also digital tv which is working in uhf ultra high frequency in the frequency band of 470 to 862 megahertz and then we have uh, dab in in ultra high frequency digital audio bro broadcast which is available in two different bands 223 to 230 megahertz and also from 1452 to 1472 megahertz and also there are mobile phones with analog technology also operates in in ultra high frequency in the in the frequency band of 450 to 465 megahertz And then we have GSM, which is also working in ultra high frequency in the band of it. It works in two different bands, eight ninety to nine sixty megahertz, and also one seven one zero to one eight one eight one double eight zero megahertz. And again, we have digital cordless telephones, 
which is also working in ultra high frequencies in the band of 18802 1900 megahertz and and 3g cellular systems are also working in uhf ultra high frequencies in these bands 1900 to 1980 megahertz to 2020 to 2025 megahertz and 2110 to 2190 megahertz. And then we have directed microwave links, which is working. Uh, so th these are these are basically super high frequencies, which is working in the, the bandwidth of 2 to 40 gigahertz. Followed by that, uh, we have infrared, uh, which is we have EHF. It is extremely high frequency, which is close to infrared frequencies. So these are the different uh, frequency bands and the various devices which is operating in these uh, different bands. Okay, and the next two step in higher frequencies that is in future probably what we will have in the sense uh, optical transmission, um, wireless communication may be possible through optical transmission also. Okay, that is. Uh, Optical transmission for wireless communication will be introduced. And also infrared transmission can also be used for direct links, that is for connecting different buildings through laser light. This is a typical example. Okay. So why we are discussing about these frequencies? Because in if you take a wired, if you take wired communication, then there is no issue of uh, frequencies because, because you have a wire. You have a wire and the communication happens through that particular wire. So there is no question of interference. There is no question of interference. The signal is uh, focused in one particular direction and the signal is protected uh, by the shield of the cable or wire, whatever it may be. Okay. So the chance of interference is very low. In wired communication also interference may happen if this wire is, is, is getting crossed by another wire which is operating at a very high frequency. In that case, there is a possibility of inter uh, interference, but otherwise generally there will not be any interference. But this is not the case in wireless communication. In wireless communication, the media is a shared media. So different devices, uh, will, everybody is using the shared media, that is air is the media. And so, so everybody cannot work in the same frequency. If everybody works in the same frequency, then there will be a lot of interference and the communication, whatever the sender wants to receive, send, it cannot be received by the receiver. So there should be some standardization done like uh, which frequency should be used by whom and like what, okay? So that is the reason why we are uh, very much particular about these frequencies. And generally these frequencies were allotted by some international or national standards. So they define like who should use which frequencies and for what purpose. So that's it about the frequencies of for radio transmission. So next let us try to understand the properties of signal, wireless signals. Okay. So basically signals are used to represent data. So signals are nothing but it is a, it is one way of representing data. So through a wireless communication media, either you may talk or you may send some information like a text message or whatever it may be. All these are sent as signals. Okay. So so finally, but these signals represents data. So signals are nothing but physical representation of data. That is what is a signal is. And, and signals are transmitted by the layer one or the physical layer of ISO OSI reference model. So you may be knowing the ISO OSI, the seven layer model. The bottommost layer is the physical layer. So physical layer uh, or it is called as layer one that is responsible for transmitting the uh, signal from, so, from, this, from source to the destination, okay? And what is a signal? A signal is basically a function of time and location. Signal is basically a function of time and location. So this is how a wireless signal is defined. 
and typically the radio transmissions are periodic signals the radio transmission signals are periodic signals that is they are normally a sine wave it looks like a sine wave if you take a analog signal analog signals are continuous in nature that is they are continuous in time and their values are also continuous that is they never stop for every millisecond every nanosecond some data will be transmitted so the time is also continuous and the data or the values are also continuous as if you take a digital signal it is discrete in time time and its value also discrete okay there is a, there is some definition like uh, first uh, per, at, at at time zero what is the value of the signal at time one what is the value of the signal at time two what is the value of the signal okay there is discrete uh, points we have there is nothing like 1.5 at 1.5 what is the value or oh, there is no value just we connect 1 and 2 but 1 what is the value at 2 what is the value that will be connected okay. so so such signals are called as a uh, digital signal which is discrete in time and discrete in values and and it has discrete values so the general function of the sine wave is is given mathematically like this g of t is equal to at into sin 2 pi f f f subscript t into t plus phi of t so here you can see there are th three terms a f and phi so a represents the amplitude of the signal and f represents the frequency of the signal and phi represents the phase of the signal and with f with a f and phi there is a subscript t There is there is there is an a subscript t, f subscript t, and phi subscript subscript t, which means that amplitude changes with respect to time. A subscript t means amplitude changes with respect to time. F subscript t means frequency of the signal also changes with respect to time. And phi subscript t means the phase of the signal also changes with respect to time. Okay. so if you take a typical analog signal uh, sine wave it will be looking like this it will be like looking like this okay so x axis is nothing but time here x axis is time and y axis is the frequency okay so sorry y axis is amplitude x axis is time y axis is amplitude so normally amplitude represents the voltage of the signal normally amplitude represents the voltage of the signal so this is nothing but the uh, voltage at this point of time the amplitude or the voltage of the signal is this much okay similarly at at this point of time the amplitude or the voltage of the signal is this much like this okay and this is the frequency of the signal this is nothing but the frequency of the signal it is one this is this is one cycle one cycle what is the duration that is the uh, frequency okay and phi is the at uh, uh, what at 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 what uh, angle the signal is starting so that is called as phi okay it is the phase of the signal phi represents the phase of the signal okay yes so this just now we have discussed yeah so any so basically any a periodic signal can be represented by using the by using uh, fourier representation and this is that is given something like this any periodic signal can be represented in terms of uh, uh, in terms of in terms of uh, uh, fourier equation with a combination of sine and cosine waves okay so basically it is possible to construct every periodic signal g okay by using sine and cosine okay and and that is given by the that is given by fourier as this equation g of t is equal to 1 by 2 c plus sigma n equal to 1 to infinity an sin 2 pi 
n f t plus sigma n equal to one to infinity b n cos two pi n f t. Okay, so here c represents the direct current, DC direct current, and a n and b n represents the amplitude of the nth cosine, nth sine and cosine function. A n and b n represents the amplitude of the nth sine and cosine function. Okay, so basically this equation, what it says in the sense. An infinite number of sine and cosine function is needed. Okay, an infinite number of sine and cosine function is needed because you can see this this particular equation. It is going from n equal to one to infinity. This also it is going from n equal to one to infinity. So we are basically discussing here how to construct a periodic signal. So to construct a periodic signal, you need an infinite number of uh, sine and Uh, cosine function is is needed to create an arbitrary periodic signal to create an arbitrary periodic signal okay but in real time but in real time if you see the bandwidth of the medium through which the signal is passed okay the bandwidth of the medium through which the signal is passed so signal is passed through what signal is passed either through air or cable or any other transmitter the bandwidth of this medium is limited so it has a limited bandwidth it is not that it can pass any bandwidth here you can see f the frequency f is multiplied with n so what happens what happens in the sense as as n approaches infinity as n approaches infinity the frequency will will keep on the value of the frequency will keep on increase okay here i i don't say that frequency will increase because if frequency oh, yeah the value of the frequency will will keep on increase as a result not but 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 the medium through which the signal is passed it has a limited bandwidth so basically it cannot it cannot allow all bandwidth to to, to pass okay so 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 from this what we can infer in the sense it is it is not required it is not required to to actually create an arbitrary periodic signal because in reality that is not required because in reality itself your medium has a limited bandwidth okay so therefore it is enough to consider a limited number of cosine and sine and cosine function to construct periodic function you need not uh, consider infinite number of sine and cosine function to create a, a periodic signal okay so this is how an ideal periodic signal uh, looks like and this is a p and and, and this is a, what you call a sine wave with different frequencies okay with with different frequencies so in real time also you cannot uh, create a signal with with infinite frequencies even though if you create a signal the medium will not accept all the frequencies okay right so basically a sine wave can be represented in time domain there are three ways of representing sine wave okay so that we will be discussing now the first way is to represent in the time domain in the time domain the sine wave can be represented something like this so here the x axis is time the x axis is time and the y axis represents the amplitude of the signal y axis represents the amplitude of the signal so amplitude or voltage a is amplitude and b is the voltage so this is the signal okay so this is the signal right so 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 initially this is so this is one signal and this is another signal the difference is this signal is shifted the second signal which is marked in rose color is shifted in phase okay it is shifted in phase by certain degrees it is shifted in phase by certain degree how much it is shifted means this much it is shifted okay whereas the first signal you can see it is passing the origin it is passing the origin the second signal is not passing the origin it is passing somewhere here okay so that point the difference between origin and that point is the is the degree of shift so how much shift uh, that much that second signal is phase shifted okay so this is the first way Uh, this is the normal way to represent a uh, sine wave here we represent the signal in this in the time domain and uh, 
the y axis represents the amplitude x axis represents the time and this is nothing but the frequency of the signal okay one one cycle for one cycle uh, what is the time okay what is the fre frequency is nothing but 1 by t frequency is given by frequency is 1 by t okay so for one cycle how much time it takes so if 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 for one cycle it takes x amount of time then the frequency of this signal is 1 by x the frequency of this signal is 1 by x okay fine so this signal uh, shows that the frequency is 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 similar for all cycle the frequency is similar but in reality it need, it, it need not be like that okay the frequency of the signal may vary with time So this is the signal in time domain, uh, sine wave in in, in in time domain. So sometimes representing the signal in time domain may be problematic. Sometimes representing the signal in time domain may be problematic, especially if the signal contains many frequencies, especially if the signal contains different frequencies. In such cases, the signal can be represented in frequency domain. In such cases, the signal can be represented in frequency domain okay so let us discuss how the signal will look like in frequency domain and and if you want to display the various frequencies there is a tool and that tool is called a spectrum analyzer using spectral anam analyzer you can visualize the various frequencies of a of a sine wave or any signal and there is a mathematical and the mathematical tool uh, that is available for translating a signal from time domain to frequency domain is Fourier transform. Fourier transform is the mathematical tool using which a signal can be translated from time domain to frequency domain. Okay, so so sorry. So this is how the signal will look in the. Uh, frequency domain so this particular diagram shows how the signal will look in the frequency domain so here x axis is frequency and y axis is amplitude or voltage x axis is frequencies and y axis is amplitude or voltage so here you can see there is only one line there is only one line because this is a periodic signal uh, with a with with only one frequency it does not have different frequency it is different cycle here does not have different frequencies if there are different frequencies, then 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 you may have uh, a different uh, multiple lines. Okay, so here, so in in this case, there is only one frequency. Okay, so so you are getting only one line. Okay. So as there is only as there is only one frequency, only. So, so the figure only shows one peak, okay, and the signal consists of only a single part of only a single frequency part, right? But an arbitrary periodic function would have many peaks, okay? right? So this is how the signals are represented in frequency domain, and the third way of representing the signal is in the phase domain. In the phase domain, so when you represent the signal in the phase domain, uh, it is it is also called as phase state. The signal that is represented in the phase domain is also called as phase state or the diagram to represent that it is it is also called as signal constellation diagram is otherwise called a signal constellation and diagram so let us see the uh, diagram first so this is how the signal is represented in the in the phase in the uh, in the phase domain okay so here you can see there is a Basically, there are three vectors were given. So this is one vector. This is one vector. This is another vector. Okay, and this is another vector. So so the signal is represented in different phases. So th this is the normal signal which is passing through the origin. This is the normal signal which is which is passing through the origin. Okay. So 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 in this case, it is called as it is. Uh, it it is called as in phase signal it is called as in phase signal and and this is the case 
the signal is phase shifted by 90 degrees. The signal is phase shifted by 90 degrees. So here in this case, if the signal is phase shifted by 90 degrees, it is called as quadrature signal Q. Okay. So the, here the signal is shifted by 45 degrees. Like that, you can represent uh, how much the signal is shifted. If the signal is not at all shifted, uh, then the signal will be just represented in the x-axis a line, okay, with an arrow. So this uh, this arrow, this this length of this line represents the amplitude of the signal, okay. The length of this line represents the amplitude of the signal. And if the signal is shifted by 45 degree, it will be like this. If it is 30 degree, it will be somewhere here. If it is 90 degree, it will be here. If the signal is not at all shifted, if it is passing through the origin, then it is called as in-phase signal. And, and, and the signal, uh, the, the x-axis represents the uh, phase of the signal. So it, here the phase is zero. Okay. The signal is represented by 90 degrees, uh, then, then, the, the, then this vector will lie on the y-axis. Then the vector will, be lie, will lie on the y-axis and that is called as quadrature, right? So that is what is being explained here. So the length of the vector represents the amplitude of the signal and uh, the angle is nothing but a phase shift. And if the, if the signal is in line with the x-axis, so if the signal is in line with the x-axis, uh, then it is called as phase zero. So that is otherwise called as in phase that is the signal is not at all shifted. Uh, if the signal is shifted by 90 degree, uh, then that is that is that is called as quadrature. And that is called as quadra quadrature, uh, which is which is which is uh, represented as Q. Okay. Which is represented as uh, Q over here, right? So So this is about the various. Uh, uh, this is how the, this. So so this is this is about the signals of wireless communication, right? Fine. Okay. So let us uh, uh, stop here and continue from the next topic in the next lecture. So, thank you.